So I got out the squirrel wrench uh, on this particular morning, opened the gate, pulled through it, walked up to lock the gate, looked around, the corner of my eye, caught some movement, and I couldn't believe it. There was this little fawn just standing there, and so I watched her for a while. I went over and locked the gate, thinking, oh, she'll have for sure taken off by now, turned around. Not only had she not ran off, she laid down. I just couldn't believe it. I've never had that exact experience before. I've walked up on them where they were laying there when they were smaller than this one and had them not run, but I just couldn't believe it and uh, watched her for several minutes and then finally thought, well, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and head on back. And so I went over, walked over, got in the truck, closed the door, thinking that's going to surely scare her off. And, uh, and it didn't. She just kept laying there and I watched her through the uh, through the uh, window of the truck and then as I pulled away I'm thinking okay this is surely gonna scare her off and as I pulled away it didn't she just she watched me she kept an eye on me until I I guess until I was out of sight and I that was just one of the coolest things that I've seen in a while according to the Missouri Department of Conservation that's the most dangerous wild critter in this part of the country About the first thing I do every time I come out to Squirrel Ranch, unless I'm already armed, is I strap on that governor loaded up with 410 shells. Anyway, I'm just going to kind of clean up, pick up some sticks and uh, leaves. We've had quite a bit of wind come through, it looks like. Check for bats up on top of the cabin, uh, snakes around the barn, and uh, just deal with all that if, if I have any of those issues. And uh, too doggone hot to do to mow. It's also so dry that it just creates a big old dust bowl. and. Unfortunately, haven't had a lot of rain, so, you know, it's a little weedy, but not too bad. And But I do like to keep it cleaned up around the barn, the cabin, and uh, up here around the, uh, the base camp at the Squirrel Ranch. So anyway, thank you. Don, after you're in Pittsburgh, appreciate it. I'm inspired. Uh, old Mel shared some, uh, uh, young Mel, I should say, shared some uh, communication you and her have had about watching the Squirrel Ranch. It motivates me, uh, just knowing there's a handful of folks out there following what's going on, and I really enjoy it. It's just fun to share what's happening and uh, in and around uh, in and around the place out here. So uh, anyway, appreciate that. Hope all's well and appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll be back. Some of my friends ask whenever they come out to the cabin, hey, is there anything we can do to help you? Anything you need done? I always tell them the biggest thing you can do is go around picking up sticks and leaves and stuff that's falling off these trees and do this right here. That's probably the biggest thing anybody could do to help me. It really is amazing the quantity, just the sheer volume of stuff that falls off these hardwood trees and it is almost a full-time job just keeping the sticks and the leaves and the various things that fall off oak trees, just keeping that stuff picked up and blown off the deck and away from your buildings and off the roofs and, and so forth. But I was just walking around just seeing what all needed to be done and I was getting ready to get my blowers out to blow that deck off and I came around the side and I looked up and for probably the 15th, 16th, or maybe 17th year in a row, there was a nest full of birds up there. These guys looked like they were pretty close to being able to take off on their own, but I was trying, being real careful not to, not to uh, scare them, but it was just kind of fun watching those guys and uh, on probably their uh, little bit of remaining time they had left in the nest, but I went around the barn just looking in all the little nooks and crannies. I've had a, a uh, one of those darn pygmy rattlers in that hole before I need to actually concrete that over. But just going around looking, making sure I don't have anything that might get inside the barn when I open the barn door up. But And I'd be helping myself out if I got all that stuff off the ground and hung it all up and and uh, just removed, uh, you know, all the little hiding places where insects and, and all the stuff that comes after that can come up and, and uh, set up shops. So... I decided to do a perimeter check, and then I thought, well, I'll get that roundup out, even though I know I'm taking my life into my own hands, according to the attorneys on TV. But um, got ready to do some spraying, and I looked down and saw that darn snake skin there, and, uh, and I'm 99% sure that there used to be a copperhead in that not too long ago, a copperhead, and I can't stand those darn things. So anyway, I sprayed all around that barn, and, and that should help, help me out uh, in keeping those darn snakes away. These darn birds on the side of the cabin over here, that... Uh, they've been there for quite, or that nest has been there for years and years, and I couldn't even tell you how many birds have been born in that nest and then flown off to hopefully procreate a whole nother generation of birds. And uh, uh, so I just decided years ago I was going to leave that lantern there. I think maybe the after the first year that, that I found a nest in there, if I remember right, 
I think I might have knocked that nest off after the birds had flown away and all. And then the next year they came back, I thought, you know, what the heck, I, I'll burn one lantern uh, for, it'd be kind of cool to just see if they keep coming back and they have, and I'm guessing it's probably been 15, 16 years, uh, birds that have, uh, or 15 or 16 springs worth of birds have been born in that nest and flown off. So as I, I was uh, watching, I heard, as I was getting up there close to those birds, I was trying not to disturb them. I was really concerned about them getting scared and flying, flying off. So I was real careful. I zoomed in and had that camera on my tripod there and yeah, got her like that. But I kept hearing this fluttering, a real loud fluttering behind me in the trees. And then I realized that's that mother bird. And she's keeping an eye on these, uh, on these fledglings. And sure enough, uh, I didn't see her fly in. I was hoping I could get her flying into that nest, uh, feed them, but uh, uh, didn't, didn't see her come up. Man, she just kept flying around from limb to limb and get a little bit closer and uh, and that was just kind of cool. So how cool is it on one morning, just kind of looking around right in front of my face, uh, a, um, a fawn, a real young fawn, and these baby birds just without really getting very far off my driveway uh, back out here at Squirrel Ranch. So gosh, morning like that is worth price of admission, really is. So I'm not one to give too much advice or whatever, but just something to think about. If you're prone to spend more, most of your time in town, on the pavement, not too far off the roads and the streets, man, get out there's so many state forest and, and national forest and, and just public property to get out and enjoy. And uh, you just have to stop, be still, listen, look. And after you train your, kind of train yourself to be aware of these kinds of things in nature, you'll, I think you might be surprised at how many things you'll see that you've over the course of your life just looked right past because you weren't kind of expecting to see it but when you go through life kind of expecting to see some really cool things like that you're going to based on my personal experience whether it's birds in a nest on a coleman lantern at the side of your cabin or a, a newborn fawn next to the drive uh your drive or a bear walking across your property behind the cabin when you're least expecting it or a giant feral hog right down below your cabin uh, within probably 100, 150 yards. That's pretty cool stuff. Pretty neat stuff. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you. <laughs>